Hello, welcome to another Facebook Live. We got a good one for you here today. Hopefully um, all of you got on and heard about the announcements and the directions we're heading um, with the health focus yesterday. I hope you're excited. This is really great for the opportunities and for uh, the direction of the company. Um, I also hope you all are excited for Black Friday and the Black Friday uh, weekend sale. It's coming up soon and you're gonna get some more information here very shortly. As consultants, you guys will have the opportunity uh, to get access to these items that we will be discontinuing. And so we wanna give you guys the chance to get as much as you want uh, as quick as you can um, before they go out of stock. But um, we're really excited um, about this coming up this next week. It's gonna be a great, uh, a great sell. So today, I want to bring on um, somebody you probably know, somebody that's um, been very successful in this business uh, to share a little bit with us about um, something that might surprise you. And that's that she is an introvert and she has had to um, really fight against okay, maybe some of her natural tendencies to be successful in this business. And she, at convention, she decided to uh, share some of those thoughts. So Trisha, welcome to the show. Hi. How are you? I'm great, how are you? Good. Now I don't want you to get all introverted and not talk and share today. So you'd be a little more extroverted today. But um, Trisha, at, at, uh, at convention, you shared some uh, really cool things that I think surprised a lot of people and, and gave some insight. I think a lot of people just assume everybody that's successful in this business, loves to throw themselves out there and loves to um, you know, just be in front of people all the time, but that's not the case. We know that some of our most successful are not that way. And you're, you're one of them, which surprises me as well. But tell us a little bit about, uh, about what you shared at convention about this topic. Okay. So this topic, I'm so passionate about it. So close to my heart, uh, because like Jason mentioned, it might come as a surprise to many of you. And you think that you see these people that are out there and doing it and you think, ah, oh, it's so easy for them. And they're just naturally um, good with people or love being around people and all that kind of thing. And so I really, really passionately wanted to speak on this topic because I'm actually a pretty severe introvert. So if you know me really well, if we're very close friends, you do know this about me. Um, but I want to explain also how I'm defining an introvert for this purpose. So sometimes when people hear this term, they think shy or reserved. Okay, well, we all know that I'm not shy or reserved, okay? Um, that's not how I'm defining this. So I'm defining an introvert as someone who recharges and gets their energy by themselves, okay? Some people, and let's define them as extroverts, they recharge and get their energy from people. So being around people that energizes them and they feel so good and uplifted and that just gives them a ton of energy. Whereas if you're an introvert, you have to actually by, be by yourself to get that energy back for yourself and that you can go out into the world again. So for example, at convention, it's so much fun and there's so much going on and so many people that a lot of you would leave convention absolutely energized and excited and ready to take on the world. And you've just got all this burst of energy that you've taken from people. Um, but me, <laughs> so I don't know how well this picture is going to show up because it's printed a little bit darker. Um, but I'm going to show this. This is, this is uh, me after convention. Can you see that? <laughs> so I'm drained. Like, and just being around people with social interaction and and just um interacting and talking and all these things that drains my energy severely now this does not mean that i don't like people okay because if i just didn't like people at all i probably wouldn't be in this business but that just means that it i need to have an effort to have my alone time so big events drain me although i love them and they are awesome some things that we can do to help us in this business, okay? Um, I also, before I get into the tips and things like that, there's a few things I wanted to share. You might not realize that you're an introvert. So I wanted to share a couple things. I found this article online and it's signs you're an introvert, okay? 
um, the, the title was 23 signs you're secretly an introvert and it was at huffingtonpost.ca. I'm not gonna share all 23, don't worry. However, I wanna share a few of these points and it's the ones that resonated with me particularly. So just give me some hearts or give me some thumbs up if any of these resonate with you and you can relate to this, okay. So let's start. You find small talk cumbersome, incredibly cumbersome. Okay. I will have like the most in-depth um, conversations with you. Let's debate something. Let's talk about like deep conversations. I love that. But small talk, I just, how's the weather? Oh yeah, it's snowing out, hey? I, I, don't, I don't know how to do this. I just don't. Um, networking makes you feel like a phony. Now, this is really hard as we are in network marketing, right? So giving a talk in front of 500 people uh, is less stressful than having to mingle with those people afterwards. Anyone can relate to that? It is for me. <laughs> Keep it real here. Um, when you get on the subway, you sit at the end of the bench and not in the middle. You start to shut down after you've been active for too long. You actively avoid any shows that might involve audience participation. Does that sound like you, anyone? And you screen all of your calls, even from friends. So it's funny because a lot of my team and I, we never, ever, ever talk on the phone. And if we do, we think that we're butt dialing each other. We're like, are you pocket dialing me? Like, why are you even calling me? Actually, this morning, Bella texted me and she goes, I need to talk to you on the phone. This is not textable. <laughs> because whenever you want to talk to Bella, she says, OK, is this textable? If you can text something, she wants you to text her. She doesn't want you to call her. So these are just some of the things that I really related to in terms of being an introvert, okay? So why was it so important to me to share this topic and speak on this topic? So when you are an introvert and you're in this business, there are so many things we struggle with internally. And I just want everyone to know um, that's feeling the same way as me and that can relate to me that you're not alone and you're not the only one. So we have a lot of self-doubt. We doubt ourselves and our ability to be in this business. We think, I'm in the wrong business. Why would I choose this business? Why would I be in network marketing when the thought of speaking to strangers makes you wanna poke my eye out, okay? We think we can't be successful in network marketing. We think, how am I gonna be a success in this business if I don't even wanna talk to people that I don't know and I'm not out there um, putting myself out there. I, I'm one of those people in the grocery store who I look straight ahead. Look straight ahead. I avoid all con eye contact with anyone. And I'm just like, oh, please don't strike up a conversation with me. Please don't strike up a conversation with me. Just look ahead, Trisha. Nobody will say anything. Just avoid eye contact at all costs. I go to the park with my kids to watch my kids play. I don't go there to form relationships with other moms. And so for somebody like me, and like I know some of you watching this struggle with the same things, you think, I can't be successful, I'm in the wrong business, this isn't gonna work. And um, there's also guilt that we struggle with because we aren't doing what you're supposed to be doing in network marketing. We're supposed to be striking up conversations, right? We're supposed to be doing these things. This is how you get a connection with somebody, this is how you grow your business. We're supposed to be doing all of these things or so we're told and so, the fact that that is hard for us or we struggle with that and don't necessarily love living in that space would be very, very hard. So with all of that said, that is why I was so, so passionate about sharing this topic. And I wanted to give you specific tips that you can use um, as an introvert in this business here. I actually wrote them down so I can not be off track for you. So tips for introverts. All right. so in this business, number one tip I can give you is get your alone time in during events, okay? So some simple ways that you can do that in our business is when you can travel alone. <laughs> and so um, a lot of my team were hopping into like a lot of vehicles and vans and stuff like that to go down to convention this summer. And they're like, hey, Trisha, there's room for you in the van. Why don't you come with us? And I know myself, and I know that being in a van with people for hours on end it would just actually drain me before I even got to the main event, which is convention, and I have to be on during that event as well. And so I was just like, no, no, that's okay, just go without me. 
And people were like, oh, are you gonna get there? And I was like, don't you worry, I'll just figure it out, you know? I just ended up hopping on a flight by myself, um, stay in your own hotel room. Uh, I think that I usually stay in my own hotel room and last two leaderships ago, there were everybody else was sharing rooms and I actually had my own room with two queen beds. So I had an extra bed. I really just wanted to stay by myself. Okay. So make those efforts to stay by yourself. If you are introverted and you do need that downtime. One thing I want to say is that a lot of you are thinking, should I not be with my team? Should I not be with them? Should I not be engaging with them? Should I not be creating those bonds? Should I not be there for them? Will that make me a bad leader? I want to tell you that self-care and doing what you need to survive and thrive <laughs> is not making you a bad leader. I don't think, and I would hope that people don't think of my name in this business and say, man, that Trisha, she is just a terrible leader. She does nothing for her team. She's never there for them. She's not present. Honestly, I would hope, would hope not. Um, but yet behind the scenes, I do stay by myself and I do travel by myself. And so that's just one tip. Number two, and this is very simple, but it took me a little while to realize this, do not over schedule, okay? So make sure that you maintain enough downtime even when you're trying to reach a goal, even if it's a big goal. So for me, when the incentive trips are announced, automatically I'm like, okay, let's do this. I'm gonna earn this really quick, that is my thing. I'm known for that. I like to just earn the trips incredibly quick and then I'm not stressed out at the last month trying to earn it. And so that's just what I like to do. But even in that situation, I would not remotely take eight tastings a month for me personally, because I know that, that is going to be a huge pain on my energy and not worth it. And I'm not gonna be able to recharge. So even when you're trying to hit big goals, know your limits and stick within them, okay? Do not schedule tastings immediately at following large events. So if you're getting back from leadership or you're getting back from convention, all the extroverts of the world will be like, yeah, I want a tasting on the books. Like the day I get back, you know, I'm so excited. I'm so fired up. Okay, well, people like us, we need to give ourselves a few days leeway. So we're going to make sure that when we get back from big events, there's going to be a couple of days where we're not doing anything. We know we're not ready to go out there and promote because we need to recharge from all the social activity that just took place. Number three thing that we can do is limit the number of guests at tastings. So with a host, you can communicate an ideal guest count. For me personally, this is three to five. And I know there are some on my team that actually won't do six. And so anything over six, we break it into two tastings. So like I said, if there are eight people that really want to try Thrive, there is no reason that you can't have two tastings and four attend one and four attend the other. It's worked out really amazingly um, for some of us on my team. Um, and so knowing that, the reason behind that, extroverts, you're probably like, you're crazy. You could just get more you know, results. But when we have a large group of people, we are easily overwhelmed as an introvert and we are not actually making those connections that we want to be making. And then it's gonna take us like two days to recover from the one tasting. So if you keep the numbers small, um, it's just a lot more manageable for us, okay? Uh, the number four tip that I wanna give is try ways, uh, try to find ways to promote online. So we know that really nothing beats a tasting, but more and more things are moving online and there are ways that we can promote online. and as an introvert, this is the best thing ever, okay? So online communication, for one, is typically a lot easier for us. Um, like I said before, with the phone phobia, a lot of introverts tend to also have phone phobia. Um, and so it's easier for us to send Facebook messages and texts. And everyone's going to tell you in network marketing that you're going to get better results with the phone. You have to pick up the phone. You have to pick up the phone. And the vast majority of everyone, yeah, okay, that's a solid advice. And even for introverts, yeah, you're probably going to get better results with the phone. However, if it is between not promoting Thrive because you can't pick up a phone or finding a way to promote Thrive and keep your passion alive, doing it a different way, you do that. 
a different way and you find what works for you and what you can do, okay? Keep sharing Thrive Life genuinely online. Keep posting about the things that you're making, the recipes, the on the go, how it's helping you. Keep genuinely sharing that. You're creating interest over and over and over again. And people might not be reaching out to you immediately, particularly if you've been in this business for years and you've always promoted Thrive Life. But new things are coming and keep sharing those things. And eventually some people will be curious enough that hopefully they'll reach out to you. And that is something that I personally implement. I make a lot of posts. Um, that are more like interest about the company and stuff like this. And I'm hoping that people reach out to me because as an introvert, yeah, it is harder for me to reach out to other people. It's not an excuse. Um, being an introvert is not an excuse not to be successful. We're still going to make it happen. We're still going to do what we can, but we're going to do what we can in our own way um, and try not to stress out about it. So with that said, um, point four with the online um, promotion and communication, I still want to um, kind of express that in person is really the best. I truly do believe it is because you can form a much better bond with somebody or connection with somebody in person than you possibly ever could online. Yes, there are success stories online, like case in point, my best friend, Lori, we met online. So there are success stories to online friendships and relationships. Um, but I just want to share one little story with you. Um, I was pregnant and sick and tired, literally. And I had a tasting and I went and did it. And at the tasting, um, the host said to me, I have a friend who couldn't make it, but she wants a catalog and she'll place an order for some snacks. And I'm thinking, I'm tired, you know, I'm pregnant, I have all these excuses, and I'm an introvert, so I just would rather just leave it at that. I could have just taken the order for snacks and be done with it. But this was actually during the, um, what was it called, the Thrive Games, where it was like a team of, of four people that worked together, and we tried to earn this trip to Phoenix. So I had a team that was relying on me, and, and I was trying to contribute to, and I knew that if I offered this lady who couldn't make it to the tasting, a private little tasting demo, I knew that I could probably get her on a delivery. But if I didn't do that, she was just gonna place a snack order. And this is back when the delivery was a three month commitment or three order commitment. And so she had never tasted it. She wasn't gonna commit to anything without tasting it. So I thought, do I really want to drive all the way out to her? She was not close to my home. To do one tasting to get one new delivery customer she's already with another network marketing company and works full-time and has kids she's probably not looking to enroll ah, okay fine i'll take one for the team so i did i took one for the team i got over myself and all of my excuses i went out there and did a one-on-one -on -one cooking demo and this lady's name is annie fisher and she is now one of the top performers on my team she's just earned her second incentive trip with Thrive Life, and she's pretty much every month since then in the top 10 spells on my entire team. If I wouldn't have gotten out of myself and if I would have just stayed in the comfort of my own home, uh, since a few Facebook messages of how great Thrive is, I don't think any of that would have happened. So if you're thinking long-term success and you want to build this business, yeah, sometimes we just have to get out of ourselves and make it happen and, and go and be present and be in person, okay? Um, number five, I'm almost done here, don't worry. Number five, be open and communicate these things. If I was just always staying by myself and traveling by myself and doing all these things without telling my team why, they would think I'm a jerk maybe, I don't know. <laughs> but all of my first levels, they know that because I tell them and I communicate with them that I struggle and they know I'm introverted and they know what I'm dealing with and so they are so understanding with that, with knowing that I need that alone time and knowing that it's not because I don't love them and I, it's not because I don't care about them and I, it's not because I don't enjoy our time together, it's because I need self-care too, being my personality type. So if you are that way and you wanna implement some of these tips, make sure you communicate that to your team. Make sure you say, listen, I am an introvert. You know, this is hard for me um, and I do care about you. I just do, do need some alone time here and there. And then people will really understand that. So number six, this is the very last tip I want to give. 
And it's most important. And if you take nothing away from anything I've said other than number six, I want it to be this one, okay? Remember that you can be successful here. Don't beat yourself up um, because you're not the same personality as someone else and you can't do the same things as someone else that you see in this company and they're doing this and that and you know that you can't do that. Don't beat yourself up. You can be successful too. Accept and love who you are. Love yourself. You have your own strengths. You have your own abilities. It doesn't have to be the exact same way as somebody else. Um, do what you can. It's not all or nothing because if it were all or nothing, I wouldn't be here because I don't believe I'm doing everything I'm supposed to be doing in network marketing, but I'm so glad I am here because I know that I'm doing what I can do and that is good enough. Okay. Um, just one last thing. I, I recently discovered that Eric Warre, who is like one of the network marketing gurus, who's been so successful in this business and teaches others to be successful in this business. I recently just discovered that he's an introvert. So that was just, Wow, that was such um, so validating to me that I'm in this business because other introverts can also be successful, um, wildly successful in this business as well. So I just hope that um, this touched some of you and made you realize, wow, if Trisha can do this, then I can do it too, because that's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to validate your decision to be here in this amazing company that is going so far and the potential is just phenomenal. I just want introverts to stay and know that you're welcome here and you can do it too. So that's kind of all the tips that I wanted to share. Trisha, I learned a lot. I didn't have a chance to go to very many of the workshops because my extroverted self was out doing my extroverted thing. I'm assuming that you would define me as an extrovert. From what I know, probably. <laughs> so give me the definitions again. I really like that. So you find your, say one more time, what introvert and extrovert. I'm just speaking as in terms of energy. So introverts yeah. recharge alone. You need to be alone to recharge their energy. While extroverts often get their energy and they recharge by being around other people. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Cause yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Great definition. I, I like how you've uh, laid that all out. And I think it's really important. Uh, like you said, um, I think that everybody thinks that, in fact, I've heard things, that people will assume about you um, and then they meet you or find out and things like that and they're, or other leaders and they're like, man, there's all kinds of different personalities, different approaches, everything to be successful in this business. And, and you would naturally think, you know, if you're an introvert, you'd struggle in this, but no, some of our, you and many others of our best uh, would be defined as introverts. I agree. Good stuff. So Trisha, let me ask you this. So, um, You've been with us now for uh, for several years, and uh, you've kind of seen us kind of slowly evolve. And now we're making a pretty um, a big uh, focus change and and uh, direction with the company. What are your thoughts about it? I'm so thrilled. I I can't even express my thoughts of how happy I am with this change. I've been waiting a long time for this uh, change, and I feel like overall it's just going to attract such a larger group of people that want what we have and don't know about it or the messaging was a little bit off and so they weren't fighting. And I just feel like this change is gonna be such a pivotal point in this company and those that are in right now have a massive advantage and I'm just excited for the future. Awesome. Well, Tricia, thanks for all you do. You're great. Thanks for taking the time to share your thoughts today. Thank you, see ya. Yeah. Well, guys, thanks again for joining us. Um, I'm sure you enjoyed this. Once again, remember, we've got a big sale coming up, biggest of the year. And and with us making this change of direction, we're, we're, we're discontinuing a lot of products to help us fit more with um, what makes us uh, the strongest. And so with those discontinued items, we're going to give you as consultants a chance to purchase those early. Uh, uh, if you'd like to, to stock up on some of those that that we will be um, discontinuing and and going forward, we're so excited. Like like Trisha said, we there we're just so excited, so confident about where we're going as a company. We have something very special in our freeze dry process, in the way that we are healthy and convenient. The combination of that 
and focusing in on that and our freeze dry foods is, is super exciting. So thanks again for joining us and uh, we'll see you later.